Basically, um, part of what we look at um, in the workshop is um, the polyvagal theory, uh, which um, was developed by Stephen Porges. And it's mainly about how the nervous system responds to safety and threat or danger. And, and he's identified basically three kind of ways that, um, that the nervous system responds to these things. Um, and um, I took an idea from um, Deb Dana, who's done a lot of um, work with Stephen Porges on the polyvagal theory, and she does a lot of teaching in relation to it. Um, and she has the she came up with the idea of um, looking at the autonomic nervous system as a ladder, um, and I kind of um, kind of took this idea and kind of played about with that a wee bit and changed it a wee bit and came up with the idea of the autonomic tree. So um, and this just represents those um, three responses, the three circuits that are in the in the autonomic nervous system um, that determines how we respond to whether we're feeling safe or whether we um, detect a threat or whether we detect a, a danger or whether we detect a life threat. So when we're feeling safe um, at the top of the tree, um, we're in um, what's called our social engagement system, uh, where, where our brain is quite integrated. We have access to um, a particular part of our brain called the prefrontal cortex, which allows us to um, kind of think clearly. Um, so it's the part of our autonomic system that's activated um, when we feel safe and when we are socially engaged with other people. And this is um, primarily uh, brought about by, um, by the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and this state, um, of social engagement, of being in safety, is characterized by a person um, being open, being engaged, being alert, being thoughtful, able to focus and concentrate, um, connected and social, but also being able to tolerate um, solitude, uh, being motivated, uh, able to reason, problem solve, be logical and make decisions, to have the capacity to consider other people and to have empathy and compassion, and also to have the, the capacity to reflect on their own actions and the consequences of them. In other words, it's a pro-social state, um, a, a relational state, and we only experience that when we feel safe, okay? So when we're at the top of the tree, we're able to, see clearly all around us. Um, we can see the bigger picture, if you like. We get, uh, we get an idea of the whole landscape that, that surrounds us. Um, and there are lots of branches in this top part of the tree that we can choose to explore and make decisions about. So in other words, there, there's lots of neural pathways um, available to us to allow us to be flexible um, in our in our lives and in the choices that we make, um, so we have a rich environment, a really rich environment to engage with, and and we feel safe enough to make decisions that are informed by um, reason considerate, considered logical decision making processes based based on the information that we have available. So, for example, if we're in this state. Um, we could make a, um, a reasoned and considered conscious choice about whether we stay in a situation or whether we leave it. You know, we might say something like, you know, we're both getting a bit frazzled just now. Let's take a wee break and come back, come back to it when we're both feeling a wee bit calmer. So when we're at the top of the tree, we're able to regulate ourselves and we're operating within our window of tolerance. In other words, our nervous system is regulated. And we're in a state of relaxed alertness. We're not hypervigilant, but we are aware of what's going on, what's going on around us. Okay. So when we're at the top of the tree and we begin to get activated, we might be moving about a bit more, perhaps maybe feeling a bit excited, um, indicating that our sympathetic nervous system is becoming a bit more activated. But since we're feeling safe, and we're in our social engagement system, then the behaviors that we 
engage in are actually behaviours of play. So we play, we have fun, um, we engage in that kind of way. And similarly, when we're at, in the top of the tree, at the top of the tree, and we begin to downregulate into relaxation with um, another part of the parasympathetic um, nervous system being engaged, um, then again, because we're feeling safe, we engage in more kind of intimate and nurturing type behaviours. And because we feel safe at the top of the tree in our social engagement system um, and there's no fear, then the sympathetic nervous system and the, para and the part of the parasympathetic nervous system that um, immobilizes us, these are not recruited for defense. And I think that's the main thing um, to really understand with that. So we actually have the availability of these parts of our nervous system for for growth and um, repair and restoration. Okay, um, but when our nervous system senses danger, our sympathetic nervous system gets automatically triggered into a defensive threat response, and we move out of the tree canopy down in down the evolutionary scale um, to a more primitive response, which is fight or flight. So we're now in the tree trunk. Okay, we've moved down out of that um, nice um, canopy at the top of the tree. And this part of our autonomic nervous system um, that's activated in this state, um, as said, is our sympathetic nervous system. Um, and in this state, we're really mobilized for action. And that um, action will be limited to fight or flight. Um, because we don't have to have a big wide range of um, behaviours available in an emergency situation, right? We don't, um, we don't need to um, be able to have lots of choices available to us because we want to be able to react quickly um, and without conscious thought. So the behaviours of fight or flight are not a conscious choice, um, like the choice to leave a situation when we're in our social engagement system. Um, they're an automatic choice that our bodies respond to out with our conscious awareness. And typical um, reactions when we're in fight um, are agitation, anger, rage, violence, self-harm, suicidal behavior, arguing, being unable to see the other person's point of view, aggressive displays, impulsive decisions, and risky choices, um, manic type behavior. Um, so these are all typical kind of fight behaviors, um, whereas flight might be seen as walking out of a situation, avoidance, um, inability to commit, to make decisions, um, refusing to discuss things or withdrawing, storming out of a room during an argument, things like that. These are all typical kind of flight um, behaviors. If our nervous system detects a threat that's overwhelmingly life-threatening, the response might be um, to come out of the social engagement system and bypass the trunk and go straight to the roots. Okay, um, And this is an automatic freeze response. And this part of our autonomic nervous system that's activated um, is also part of our parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and we can also get into this state um, if we've previously been in fight or flight and that hasn't actually worked to, um, to remove the threat or to lessen the threat. Um, <clears throat> and this state down in the roots of the tree um, is characterized by immobilization, by people freezing, by shutting down, dissociation, terror, depression disinterest, no motivation, isolation. And, you know, the roots of the tree, these are a dark and gloomy place, hemmed in by the soil, there's no escape. And unlike the branches of the tree in the tree canopy, representing choice and engagement when we're feeling safe in our social engagement system, the roots of the trees are like bars of a prison that we can't escape from. So um, we have these three kind of states, which I think are, you know, quite nicely kind of illustrated by, by, the, um, by the autonomic tree. Um, I'm just going to come out of this.